and we're back everything's dry if you can see and I am on to the burnt umber face of the painting and I have a small brush for this but if you see I went ahead and spread out all my burnt umber and mixed it into sort of an inky consistency with my extender already it's very see-through it's very thin and you can get it uh, thicker or thinner if you want. I like to start off with thin layers and then build those up instead of doing thick layers and having it be too opaque. But this is your painting and if you want to go thicker, go thicker. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So the burnt umber part is a lot like the burnt sienna layer except we're not gonna quite do all the same and if you're following along from the eight steps to perfectly painted skin tones I painted in a little bit more on my first layer you can feel free to add whatever you want in your burnt sienna. I just outlined the whole face and I'm going to take care of the neck as well. There aren't any shoulders in this one, but I am going to take it all the way down. And I'm going to make sure that I give the hair space. And I drew some butterflies in the hair. so. I'm going to make sure the butterflies have their shadow too so they look like they are not like a tattoo on the chest. And then I haven't thought about the color I'd like the hair to be yet. All the hair starts the same way. It's the same sort of layering that you do on the face. It's just different colors for what color hair you're going to do. And my favorite combination is white hair and blue eyes. So you'll see a lot of my paintings have that color combination. But I'm feeling like I want to mix it up. I used to paint a lot of redheads and I stopped because I fell in love with the white 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 blonde hair now I look around my studio I see a lot of brown and blonde hair a couple of blues maybe I do a pink that feels springy put you in closer sorry for the camera shaking I'm actually holding it to show you where I'm painting. I did the outlines. I'm going to outline the little lentils, that's what I call them, the little dots of the nostrils. Middle of the lip. And the ends, the corners of the lip. I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm going to do a little bit underneath. And a tiny, tiny bit in the dip there. And I give her some dark brown around the eyes. If you go thinner with this, it doesn't quite look like makeup or eyeliner. If you go thicker, it looks more dramatic, like she has old Hollywood eyeliner glam. Going on. And then I like to start building up my eyes. I'm not going to go crazy with these. I'm just going to outline the irises and give the pupil some definition. I think we need a teeny bit in. 
guess I'm gonna do that as well. Hmm. Adjust. That's the thing with this painting too is um, a step by step isn't gonna help you in the moment as you're painting. If maybe you've noticed that because there's little adjustments that you're gonna make the entire time you make your painting to make it work for you. So I notice, you know, that some of my lines are a little bit more watery than others. So I have to go and adjust those by taking my brush and just feathering down the line and blending it out some because I don't want it to be like a puddle of color. See like down here? Just feathering out some which then makes underneath her chin look more shaded. You're just gonna have those type of calls to make in your own painting. But I can't really step by step out for you in a written book. Take a step back from this and then I'm gonna look at it. Let's see if anything else feels like it needs to be adjusted with the burnt umber glaze layer. And this is something you should be doing a lot with your own painting. Don't just, you know, paint and paint and paint. Take a step back and look at it. See how you feel about it. I know that in my um, eight steps to perfectly painted skin tones, I have a U right here, and I'm going to not do the full thing this time. I'm not going to contour the whole nose. I like the nose to stay a little soft, but I am going to contour that part right there, and maybe shade just a little underneath it. Again, these are things that you're going to make these calls in your own painting. You decide, well, you know, I just don't want her nose to be that defined in this one. I'd like her to have a softer nose. And then, I don't want too dramatic of eyes, so I'm not going to shade the entire eye socket. Just a little in the corners. Kind of looking at it. I didn't draw ears on this one. If you can see, I kind of cheated a little. I don't like drawing ears. Um, for whimsical girls, unless the hair is not covering them. I just like to suggest them kind of in there with shadow. And I don't know if you can really see what I did, but I, I literally just took some more burnt umber and just painted just the kind of suggestion of ear. It's really literally just pushing the brush down and pulling up to, to give it kind of the rounded suggestion of ears back there. Looking at it, I kind of feel like I should define her mouth a teeny bit more. the filter a little bit more. That's the dip there. Maybe a teeny bit of the nose. And I think that's going to be it for my um, burnt umber layer. Oh, you see that right there? It kind of messed up with the burnt umber. You should have kind of raccoon eyes. That's going to be easily fixed when I paint on the skin tone layer. I'll just add a little bit more skin tone there. But for now, we are done with that. The next layer is, just as I was talking about, is the skin tone glaze. And with the skin tone glaze, I'm going to use my large silver again, my favorite brush. And I'm going to make sure it's really moist. And I am going to paint right on top of this layer. 
I am not going to sit back and wait for it to dry. Although I went pretty darn thin with the burnt umber, so it's probably mostly dry. And I'm just going to contour her cheek. Imagine her cheek, you know, it's a circle right here. I'm just going to contour her cheek. I am using hot pink instead of red because I was thinking about doing pink hair. And I like the colors to complement each other. Now that looks kind of weird, I'm sure, especially if you're just now painting your own girl, but you just clean your brush in the one cup and then get clean water in the other cup and dry it off. And then with a clean, mostly dry brush, I don't know if you can see that, it's not really dripping wet or anything, you just blend. If you've ever seen like makeup professionals too, I talk about makeup a lot when I talk about painting. It's kind of the same idea. Painting faces, painting faces. But um, you just want to blend your colors. And you don't have to do that with thick paint. You just blend it into the paper and into the other paint. And I'm just giving her some blush bringing some life to her cheeks. If you are not liking the edges of your your blend right there, because I just used water and didn't use extender, I'm now going to put a little extender on my brushes if I were dunking it in water. Still dried it off till it's mostly dry, but the extender is helping the paint flow a lot better. And I'm going to Blend out everything. All the way over. I want it to be a nice soft gradation. And this here bothers me so I'm going to add a little more pink. And a little more extender. And I'll go all the way across. I did my red layer instead of my skin tone glaze on this one because I want to keep this girl really simple. We're only going to do one skin tone glaze for the beginners because two sometimes flattens it out if you're really new to painting. You might flatten your girl's face out a little too much with two layers, but you can do 8,000 if you'd like. And paint the red, well, my pink, into her nose. And I'm going to follow that same Biore strip. If you've seen the pore strips made by the Biore brand for your nose, it's kind of the same deal. I'm going to go up a little. And then, of course, the lips. I don't really paint when I paint, I don't really paint like piece by piece, like just the lips and then just the eyes and then just the nose. I kind of go back and forth like this and paint all the pieces together so they look like they're part of the same face. And then go back after I'm done the skin tone part and really define the part of the face that I like the most at the eyes and then I make sure that the nose and the lips look good too. You see I'm, I don't just block in the color. I use my brush to stroke in the contour of the lip. So this lip got filled in like that and the upper lip. I don't like that over there. I want it to be lighter so I can actually, with the extender and the brush, I can dry off the brush and I can lift off some of the color. You can also do this with white, but we're going to see how it goes. 
And now we just take a step back from the painting to see how we like it. I bet it's looking crazy to you right now. It looks a little crazy because of all the bright reds and pinks. And we're going to adjust it. I think if I'm going to add pink to her hair, I'm going to have to decide on the color scheme of the background and the butterflies too. I think I like a pink, green, and yellow color scheme. And that's probably what I'm going to go with. I think her face needs a teeny bit of pink in the inner corners of the eyes. And maybe along the lash line. And I'm going to let this dry just a little bit. And we're going to do the skin tone glaze next. 